How's it going everybody? Dato Doya here with another Dragon Ball Fighters video. This time covering an article that IGN released a little while ago that was focused on Dragon Ball Fighters and its player base. The title of that article being Dragon Ball Fighters PC player base drops by 80%. Now it's actually kind of funny because in and of itself the title isn't wrong per se, it's true that it dropped by 80%. It's just simply writing an article about it that makes it seem like something more than what it actually is. The only reason I don't like this article is purely because of the title, which is what most people see and react to. But of course the title can't hold everything like all of the intricacies of why the player base has dropped by this much. And the answer as to why people have left Dragon Ball Fighters is actually so simple that it will blow your mind. And that reason is simply because it's a fighting game. And not only is it a fighting game, it's also Steam's most successful fighting game ever, leading to a huge number of new players that have never played a fighting game competitively before in their life, and they saw something new in Dragon Ball Fighters that they wanted to try out, whether it would be the fantastic graphics, or the awesome character moments in the story mode, or just something else that really captured their eye. Of course, with over 43,000 new people coming to the game, a lot of them had to learn the hard way that fighting games are not easy. And of course, there's a lot of channels like me that try to make that transition into fighting games easier for them, but they either didn't care enough to look up, which is totally fair, you don't have to care about every game you played that much that you look up videos about it, or they just didn't like the feeling of getting beat down by somebody else. I covered a lot of this in my unique frustrations of fighting games, but one of the key aspects of fighting games is that you're all alone. So that means if you're not comfortable admitting to yourself that you're not the best at this game, or that you have areas you can improve on, you don't have any teammates to blame. Which means you have two options. You can either blame your opponent, or you can blame the game. And if you blame your opponent for long enough, you're going to start blaming the game. Once you start blaming the game, you're going to turn off the game. And it's simple as that. And I think the majority of players that drop the game comes down to just that. They just don't like or can't handle fighting games. Now please don't get me wrong and think I'm excusing the game's flaws. The servers have dropped a few times and the overall functionality of the lobby system can be a bit questionable. I myself haven't experienced these issues, except for on the first day or two, but I know that they exist for a large majority of the population, and that is a problem that Bandai and Arxis should fix. But to even think that these issues are the reason that 80% of people have dropped the game isn't even close to the truth. A couple of people I'm sure, but not nearly 80%. So the community response to this article was mostly, oh my god, how could this happen to Dragon Ball Fighters? it's such a fantastic game. But if you look in depth at the article itself, you can actually see that Dragon Ball Fighters is succeeding as a fighting game, and surprisingly well too. In the first paragraph you see that this is Steam's most played fighting game with over 44,000 active players at launch, and then it goes on to say that 80% of these people have dropped the game, and that still is 9,000 concurrent players on Steam over the weekend. In the second half of the article it says by comparison, the previous Steam record holder Tekken 7, which amassed a mere 18,000 players on Steam at launch, lost the same percentage of players over the course of two months. Now if Tekken 7 loses that same percentage of players, and it's also the seventh iteration of a fighting game franchise, it's only natural that Dragon Ball Fighters would lose the same amount of players faster. And again, that's simply because Dragon Ball Fighters is the first 2D competitive fighter in a long time for the Dragon Ball series. Tekken, on the other hand, is a fighting game series and has always been a fighting game series. Players jumping into Tekken knew that it would be a fighting game and that it would be hard, and they still lost 80% of their players after two months. Does that mean that Tekken 7 isn't a fantastic game? Of course not. It's actually my favorite iteration of Tekken so far. It simply means that it's a standout title in a very niche genre. And I think Dragon Ball Fighters has taken steps to expand the niche genre, but in the end it's still a fighting game and it still is going to run into those same problems, no matter how well they did on the job of making it accessible to all players. And just to end this video on a positive note for Dragon Ball Fighters, let's take a look at where 9,000 concurrent players lands it on the list of fighting games on Steam. On the day I'm making this video, which is the 14th of February 2018, Dragon Ball Fighters is within the top 100 games on Steam, and I think it's the only fighting game up there, but I'll be the first one to admit that I'm not planning on scrolling through this list of text for any longer than I need to. And now let's compare it directly to other fighting games that are popular on Steam right now. So you can see playing 9 minutes ago, there's 2,834 players on the PC version, and then for the 24 hour peak you have 6,680 players, and of course the all time peak which is a ginormous 44,000 players. Moving on to Tekken 7, we have 1,659 players playing 26 minutes ago, a 2,396 24 hour peak, and an all time peak of 18,766. And then we have Street Fighter V Arcade Edition with 1,100 players playing 32 minutes ago, a 24 hour peak of 1,603, and an all time peak of 13,000. This one's important because you might know Street Fighter V is THE fighting game right now, but the numbers would say otherwise. 
And unfortunately, this one is kind of. <laughs> and unfortunately, this one is kind of just really sad. This is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite with 18 players playing 23 minutes ago, a gigantic 34-player 24-hour peak, and the all-time peak of 3,592. I um, I I need to make a video on this game. Yeah. So this is a very bad numbers for a fighting game, even a fighting game. This is bad numbers for any game. But uh, yeah, let's move on from this one. Last but not least, I wanted to show off what an indie fighting game looks like. Even though Skullgirls is very high quality because it's an indie, because it's both an indie game and a fighting game, you have 62 players playing 38 minutes ago, to a 24 hour peak of 232, and an all time peak of 3916. 3 I, uh,. I'm still, I find it funny that this is, all of these stats are better than Marvel's stats. And, and y you know what, let's just, let's, let's stick to the topic of this video. So yeah, in closing, Dragon Ball Fighters is doing fine. The game's not dying or anything. In fact, it's actually doing very well. And I couldn't be happier with the success for this game. And I hope there's more to come. And I cannot wait to see what the numbers look like when they release any kind of hype DLC character at all. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate it. And also I wanted to ask you guys, what fighting games are you playing right now with the Dragon Ball Fighters? Or maybe you're not even playing Dragon Ball Fighters, and if you're not, let me know. I'll be down in the comments as always. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Dato Doya, and I'll see you in the next one.